with seven different algorithms to choose from. The E352 Cloud Terrarium from Synthesis Technology offers an extraordinary range of sound sculpting options. In the previous installment of this two-part video series, I gave an in-depth look at the E352's three distinct morph modes. Now it's time to take a look at the remaining modes. First up, Cloud Mode. The E340 Cloud Generator is well known and well respected for its signature stacked oscillator sound. That functionality is taken to the next level here in the E352's Cloud Mode. Like the E340, a saw or sine wave can be used as the foundation for a stack of oscillators, also referred to as a cloud. However, those are no longer the only wave shapes that can be utilized. The Cloud Terrarium provides users with the ability to choose any one of the individual wave shapes found in any of the currently loaded morph banks. Although sounds developed in cloud mode can seem complex, their construction is relatively simple. A waveform needs to be chosen as a starting point for each of the two available clouds. For this example, I'll start simply by selecting a saw wave for cloud one, which will be heard from output one. and a square wave for cloud two, heard from output two. Next, I'll select the number of copies of those wave shapes, or rather, those oscillators, that will be stacked to generate each cloud. I'll opt for four. That should be enough to hear the impact of the layers without overwhelming the sound of the primary oscillator. of the sound is then defined by the settings of the X, Y, and Z parameters. First, let me jump back out to the main menu and navigate to the visual display screen. This should help demonstrate the impact of these controls. Increasing the X parameter knob will cause the four cloud oscillators to become detuned in relation to the pitch of the primary oscillator. As the value increases, the tuning deviations of the cloud oscillators will begin to spread farther and farther away from the center. Higher settings generate decidedly dense atonal timbres, while lower settings create rich, chorus-like tones. The Y control adds an increasing amount of random fluctuation to the pitch of each of the cloud oscillators and the Z-Control determines the speed of those fluctuations. As the Y and Z parameter values approach their maximum levels, the sound becomes increasingly chaotic, eventually turning into noise. I'll add some CV modulation to each of the three main parameters, thereby causing constant variation in the pitches of the four cloud oscillators. This provides a sense of motion to the previously static sequence. As is the case with all seven synthesis modes of the E352, a mode help screen can be instantly called up to refresh your memory if you happen to forget any parameter control assignments. Let's jump back to the settings page and replace the fixed wave shapes with waves from a morph bank. At this point, I can choose any currently loaded morph bank, and then I'll be able to navigate to the bottom of the page to select the position of the wave I want within that bank. This expands the sonic possibilities exponentially as virtually any wave shape can be used as the primary oscillator of a cloud.
Perhaps the most exciting mode found in the E352 is the brand new Cloud Plus Morph. As the name might suggest, this unique algorithm is a hybrid of the cloud generation capabilities of the E340 and the morphing functionality of the E350 morphing terrarium. Just as we saw in cloud mode, two wave sources are selected to serve as the starting points for the two available clouds. The number of oscillator copies is chosen in the same manner as well. The standard fixed wave shapes are still available, but it's when a morph bank is selected that things get really interesting. The X parameter still controls the detuning of the cloud, but now the Y parameter controls both the chaos modulation amount and speed simultaneously. And the Z parameter knob morphs between the wave shapes found in any morph banks currently assigned to either cloud. I'll apply external CV modulation to each of the three control parameters. It causes the timbre to continually transform from delicate to dense and anywhere in between. Of course, the morphing doesn't always have to be seamless. Turning the phase interpolation to off and increasing the glitch amount will cause the waves to change abruptly from one to the next. This can be useful for creating unique melodic patterns or glitchy rhythms. While the morph and cloud modes appear to be the main attraction, it would be a mistake to overlook the very capable and musically intuitive 2-op FM mode. Most standard FM implementations use sine waves for both the carrier and modulator signals, and sine waves can certainly be selected. The E352 is more than capable at creating tones traditionally associated with FM synthesis, like plucky basses or metallic hits. But the E352 goes beyond traditional FM by allowing any of the morph bank waves to be chosen for either the mod or carrier wave. After waves are selected, modifications are made via the X, Y, and Z parameter controls. The X parameter controls the FM index, probably best thought of as the depth of the frequency modulation. The Y parameter controls the FM ratio, which helps further define the pitch and timbre of the sound. Conveniently, the Y parameter values are stepped, allowing only fixed, musically relevant ratios. Lastly, the Z parameter knob morphs between the waves found in any morph banks currently assigned to either the carrier or modulator wave. Like all previous modes, the two outputs are independent. Here the modulation wave is sent to the first output. and the carrier wave to the second.
Last, but certainly not least, is the noise mode. Multiple noise types, including white, pink, and clock, can be independently selected for each of the two outputs. The type is chosen using the X and Y parameter controls. X selects the noise type for output 1, and Y selects the noise type for output 2. Both noise sources are routed through a resonant low-pass filter, the cutoff frequency of which is either controlled by the coarse tune knob or the one volt per octave CV input. The filter resonance can be adjusted via the Z parameter knob. I've added some tempo sync modulation to create a choppy, clicky, percussive pattern. 